well, the Idaho Health Data Exchange is a 501c6 not-for-profit corporation, and we are the state-designated entity for the receipt of the funding um, under Section 3013 of ARRA. So we are that entity. Um, in terms of what the uh, Idaho Health Data Exchange is doing is it is creating a statewide health information exchange infrastructure to allow connection of hospitals, labs, um, uh, care providers so that they can communicate with each other to better coordinate and collaborate to improve quality of care. So practically what that means is that um, we do have uh, your basic statewide HIE infrastructure, which includes a master patient index and a record locator service and a provider directory. We have five hospitals connected and they're delivering results through our health information exchange, structured lab results, radiology, and transcribed reports. We also have three labs connected. Uh, and we hopefully in the next 120 days or so we should be bringing up another four hospitals and an additional reference lab. So we do have um, about a hundred users. The majority of those users are in practices. Um, we also have something called a virtual health record. So in addition, in, in addition to delivering delivery of lab results that are ordered by providers, we also provide a virtual clinical data repository in that um, data that's pushed through the exchange can be queried upon by uh, participating providers. So for a specialty provider that can be very useful in that if I'm seeing um, somebody at Idaho Gastroenterology then they can, their medical records folks can go in and find the results of tests that were ordered by other providers and then use that in providing care to me. Our virtual health record also provides a medication history query that will bring back medication history for patients who are on Blue Cross, uh, Regents Blue Shield, or Medicaid. Uh, we are pretty active in coordination and collaboration with uh, the Washington Idaho Regional Extension Center that is uh, the lead organization there is Qualis Health. And uh, we are one of the consortium partners, so that we participate um, in calls and meetings with the Regional Extension Center. And certainly, uh, going forward, any presentations or interactions that I have, I'll be sharing information about the, the REC and the availability of those services. And I've also, I'm also working with them so that they have enough information, good information about the health information exchange to share with their providers. We are also partnering with YREC and our health information technology coordinator to develop an Idaho um, provider advisory panel because one of the things, even in a state as small as Idaho, you really do need to coordinate that communication. And what's clear is that providers get a lot of information from a lot of different sources and it can be bewildering. I mean they're trying to run a business, take care of patients, and to have this layered on top makes it very confusing. And if they hear different messages from different sources, it's, it creates quite a cognitive load, if you will. And so our goal with the um, advisory panel is to coordinate our communication and also bring stakeholders to the table like the Idaho Medical Association, uh, the tribes, the hospital association, all interested stakeholders so that we're sharing information in a common forum and that we can get some recommendations around communications. Um, the panel also includes Medicaid, so we, uh, I think we do a pretty darn good job of uh, coordinating in Idaho because it is a small state, so essentially folks know each other. <laughs> Well, essentially, um, our initial model for funding the health information exchange was participation fees. And so I think that at this point, we're undergoing some analysis of that business plan to determine the continuing viability. But I think the idea makes sense that those who use the health information exchange should pay for the services. Now, who pays and how much? Um, 
is an open question. I'm also intrigued by some of the models that I see coming out of other states, like Rhode Island, I think, has some sort of public utility model. I think that's an interesting avenue to explore, and it'll be interesting to watch that develop. And certainly we're happy to learn from other folks' uh, experiences. I think um, the major challenge is the resource demands that managing all of those across the five domains bring. Um, certainly, given the maturity of our organization, we did have the governance structure worked out and those types of things, but the continual flow of regulations, both proposed and interim final rules, um, places a policy burden on each individual organization to analyze and determine the steps forward. So I think, um, for me, it's really a resource issue to make sure that we have the necessary staffing to cover all of those bases. Uh, I also think that, well, the, the funding for the incentive programs uh, gave us a little bit of a boost in terms of people being interested in what we're doing. I also think that it's created quite a bit of sound and noise. I talked earlier about um, providers being inundated with information and, and um, there's so much information and there's such an urgency about making decisions that I think some people just stop and they don't want to make a mistake, so they may not make a decision at all. And so I think um, part of that, part of the challenge is getting folks past the, the fear barrier about, you know, making the wrong choice, picking the wrong path, and then having to redirect. Well, it sounds like our strategy is going to be somewhat similar to New York's in that we do want to be very, very active in engaging consumers. Um, we do have on our agenda um, some a slate of consumer meetings working on development of avenues uh, for communication with consumers, including uh, social media and those types of things. So we do have a very specific plan to engage uh, patients. Because I think what's interesting for me is um, periodically uh, I'll get unsolicited feedback from um, patients who call up and say, this is a great idea, you know, whose idea was this, this is fabulous, or, you know, somebody wanting to push it yet a little bit further. And so I think that um, engaging consumers can help us continue to be successful. So it is certainly part of our plans and plans that will be implemented once our operational plan is approved by ONC.